things to help your dog through the 4th of July. Number one, containment. I just talked about how it's also an incredibly busy day for your vet, for animal control, and for the shelter. And so um, why? Because dogs are out running free. So honestly, if you don't know how your dog will respond or you already know your dog is fearful, please just do the responsible thing and put them away, safe and contained, please. The best place, if they sleep in your room with you at night, that's where they should be with the door shut. All right, so containment is incredibly important. If they're kennel trained, put them in the kennel. Go out and buy them something special they've never had. Give them something busy to chew on or work on um, in their kennel. You know, a big raw bone would be great. Go to the butcher and grab one now for that's their 4th of July treat. Please don't feel bad for your dog not attending your 4th of July party. Number two, one. proper ID, just in case. Please just make sure right now your dog has their collar on, they have tags on, they have proper identification. Not a microchip, that does not count when your dog's fleeing through the streets and someone does, they are able to contain them and catch them, um, which is incredibly difficult because again, think about it from your dog's point of view, they think they're going to die and they are just running. They are not thinking sensibly. They may not even come back if you call them. They are in absolute survival mode and when they are, they do dumb things, including, but not limited to, running right out into the street with cars zooming by. Car dogs get hit. This is a high uh, night for dogs being hit by cars. Number three, if when they are contained, TV, music, and white noise can be incredibly helpful to help drown out the noise of all the booming and the fireworks and everything going on. So when you get them tucked in safe, into bed, into their kennel, in your room. But number four, there are things we can do leading up to the 4th of July that can really help. Um, I know there's like thunder shirts that are applying pressure, there's CBD oil, there's Benadryl, one milligram per pound. So one tablet, a 25 milligram tablet, will be for a 25 pound dog. So if your dog's 50 pounds, they get two tablets. Just make sure you, you try this even tonight or prior to the 4th of July. It is rare, but every once in a while, dogs have the opposite reaction to Benadryl <laughs> that makes them crazy. It doesn't calm them down. So, and of course, talk to your vet about giving any kind of medication, but Benadryl is highly effective. I know that some dogs that are that are absolutely terrified that it is, is a serious, serious concern, you can go to your vet and get, some, get more of a sedative for them. Exercise prior. Please think about them leading up to the party, just as you would your child, making sure everything's prepped and planned and prepared for exercise, drain their energy, get them nice and tired as well. Because if they're contained a lot during the day because you're busy getting ready and then you contain them again and then you add the, the fireworks all to it, there's gonna be a lot more anxiousness involved. So let's drain some of that energy in an appropriate, powerful way as exercise and movement. So let's plan, put it in your calendar, put it in your schedule. You're going to do a good, good exercise session with your puppy or dog prior to the 4th of July. Whatever they love to do, swim, hike, walk, it will be good for both of July. Number five is the big one. This is prior proper planning, right? Um, desensitization is number five. We're gonna desensitize prior. Please don't wait until the 4th of July to just haul your puppy out to the party with all the booming and the crackling and whatever and be like, well, this is good training. Yeah, no, that's not the time to train. You wanna train your puppy where you can control what is happening you can reward and everything is all your focus is on training and guiding their emotional response and being able to control when something goes off what it is how close it is what it looks like is there sound is there sight right like it's all about controlling the environment and properly desensitizing throwing your dog out during the fourth of july and just hoping for the best is not training that's kind of cruel, quite frankly. So let's plan, if you have a puppy, especially if you just brought one home, and maybe it's not a puppy anymore, you can still help them uh, desensitize. So go pick up a few little fun little things 
just for training. This is not about family time or what your kids want to do. This is about what kind of things I can buy. Smoke balls, little firecrackers, little tiny hissing, um, whizzing. Think about all the different noises, the and the all those kind of things. Think about all the noises and the smoke and the smells. So we want to cover sight, sound, smell, um, and train through every single thing. Grab some super high value treats, a hot dog, some rotisserie chicken, whatever your dog loves the most. Now we're going to do some desensitization in your backyard where they already feel safe, right? So we're not adding a new location on top of it. Come on, you guys. Um, and then we can control everything. So we'll do one thing at a time, something not as loud, maybe a smoke ball. There should be some curiosity, a little bit of fear, and you are going to be there marking yes, 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 rewarding, rewarding, rewarding. They will be on a leash. You don't, well, I want curiosity, we don't want our dogs approaching fireworks, right? So don't don't think of this like you have to go and see the fear. No, you have to sit next to be in a calm state of mind. You need to be neutral about everything that's going on. So sit down with your dog. You need to be calm. Have kids or have spouse or friends or somebody help and, and employ the smoke ball bomb um, quite a ways away. You keep the focus of your dog on you. You have the food. The focus is not on the fireworks, okay? Does that make sense? The focus is not on the fireworks, the focus is on you. So you're gonna start rewarding, they like the, the smoke bomb. Yes, good boy, good girl. Keep their focus on you, their favorite toy, their favorite ball, even roll the ball a little bit and have a little bit longer lead. Have them doing something really appropriate, something they love, and the smoke bomb does not exist. It does not matter. They're gonna look at it, they're gonna smell it, they're gonna be like, what the heck is that? No concern, the smoke bomb is not gonna eat you. You are fine. Here's rewarding, here's treating. You're rewarding if they're if they're neutral about it. Don't try to give them treats or whatever. If they're barking or being negative, you need to correct that and then reward appropriate behavior. Something else you can do prior to even buying fireworks, which is playing the sounds. In your home, on Alexa, on YouTube, there's lots of firework tracks for dogs and for children that you can start playing. Start it off nice and quiet in the house. Um, and as I think this is what Shannon says, they're perfectly fine with fireworks, sirens, thunder. We condition them early. We play YouTube videos loudly and treated and praised. Yes, it's just not that big of a deal. When they encounter the loud noises, they look to us because you know what they've associated with? Loud noise means I get a treat. Loud noise means mom's going to give me a treat. Loud noise means mom's going to give me a treat. Run to mom because she's got hot dogs. So imagine how much better this is when fireworks go off fire alarms go off, thunder is happening. Now it means, holy shit, yes, I get a hot dog. And they'll run to you coming to you like it's the most positive thing in the world. Do you see how powerful that is? You are empowering your dog rather than creating fear and feeding and enabling into fear and trying to protect your dog from something they don't need protected from.